here, this is just a little tutorial guide on the basics of Microsoft Teams if we're using it through Glow. It might be the case that you're transitioning to a new school, a new class, or your teacher just wants to give you a little recap on how to use Microsoft Teams for homework or how you might use it in the classroom or for remote or blended learning. But this guide aims to help pupils um, try to get to grips with the basic tools. First of all, what we need to do is look for Microsoft Teams um, on Glow. Now, we don't want to search launch pads because, as we can see, our launch pad doesn't have Microsoft Teams on there. So we need to click on the little arrow in the top right hand corner and look for App Library. In here, if we just type Teams, this will hopefully search for and you will find a little purple logo with two people on it and a T. You click Add to my launch pad and Microsoft Teams should automatically be on your launch pad after that. And all you need to do is click on that to open it. Okay, so when you land on this page, this is the first thing it will take you to, and it will show you the different classes that you have been added to. We have named these tests for test purposes. However, you might have, you know, if you're in primary school, you might have um, Miss Bruff's class, um, the name of your teacher, or you might have extracurricular clubs. And in secondary school, you might have a little bit more because you might have one of these that you have been invited to for every subject. So if you click on the correct class, that will open up a general channel. Now, it might be the case that your teacher has put more channels down the left hand side here, but this is the case here that they've only used a general channel and this is where all the information is. So you can check up here to see what your teacher's been up to. Your classmates will be able to start a conversation in here and you'll be able to type to your teacher too. If you want to type to your teacher specifically and you want to ask them a question, you would say hi and then you would put the word at sorry, the, the symbol at, and then it will give you an option of who to click. If, so in this case, I want to speak to my teacher, type hi at Miss Bruff, um, can you help me please? And that will send that to your teacher and they will get a notification, letting them know, as you can see here, it's just popped up, a, let, a notification like that, letting them know that you have asked them a question. You can also see that your teacher has asked you to have a look at some materials before the lesson on Thursday. As we move into a blended learning approach, it might be the case that for your school, your teacher has flipped the classroom round. They might want you to have a read of some materials so that you can discuss them when you come into class the next day. If you go into the files section at the top here, when files opens up, you will see this class materials button here and you'll see a little pencil with a stop sign beside it, which means that it's read only. If you click on this, these are materials that your teacher would like you to have a copy of, and you can download these and save them for yourself, but they do not want you to edit these in any way. So if we click on a PowerPoint, this might be the PowerPoint that they want you to look through. And as you can see, you don't have permission to edit this file, but you can read through it. So it could be your teacher's new classroom rules and some things that you'll be working on when you go into class. So you are prepared, then you know what you'll expect when you get there. We go back to our team. We'll have a look at some other areas here. We have a separate video on how to use the assignments tab. This is where teacher can set work for you or homework for you to do. And there also is the ability to use the immersive reader tool to help you with your reading on that. We have a separate video for this, which I will link below this video on the YouTube link. So your teacher can show you this or you can have a look at this at home and this gives you a little bit more detail into how to use the assignments function and the immersive reader function. I'm going to have a look at Class Notebook now. Class Notebook is an online jotter. It's kind of a little bit like a filing cabinet as well in the sense that your teacher can store a lot of information there for you. So when you open this for the first time, it will give you a welcome note. 
it will tell you that it's a digital notebook for your whole class. However, you will have a student notebook section. So there's a private space for you where everything that you do will be, be shared between just you and your teacher. If you click on this little arrow on the left hand side, this is the navigation panel. And this is the welcome area, which has all your information. And some more information on this page here. So this is a section where it says welcome. And these are different pages within that section. Kind of like a ring binder. If you go to your collaboration space, this is where your teacher will have left a space for you to be able to work with people in your class. So on project number one, your teacher has asked you to write below one thing that has been good about lockdown. So if you think it is long lies, we'll put that in there. It might be the case that your um, fellow pupils in your class write something below you and you'll be able to see all of the class answers. And this is a really easy way for you to collaborate on a project with people in your class. There's also a content library. This where is where your teacher might store materials for you. So you can see in here, but they have set, split, split it into sections, term one and term two. In term one, they've split that into a page. So some materials we've used in class in term one. If you click on the reading materials, they've uploaded a lesson plan. If you click on writing materials, they've uploaded another lesson plan. But if you go into section two, it might be for a new term and there might be more materials added in there. So these are the pieces of information that everyone in your class will see. Here, when it says pupil test, your name will appear. And this is your section of your in-class jotter. If you click on pupil test, this is the area specific to you as a pupil that only you and your teacher have access to. So your name will appear where it says pupil test. If you click on homework, as you can see, a page has been added to this section. This page has given you some information on what to do. So in this case, it's asking you to watch a YouTube video and then be ready to answer the following question. So again, your teacher might have flipped the classroom and is asking you to do the work at home so that they can assess you on how well you've understood that when you return to class. In your handout section, it might be the case that a teacher has put in a handout from a previous lesson for you to read again, or it might be the case that there's a handout there that they would like you to have a look at before you return to class. In class notes, this can be used in a few different ways. For example, it could be a place to store your class notes. The teacher might put a little bit of information in there or they might put a document in there. And you also have the ability to take some notes in there as well. It might be the case that you would like to go home after you have had your lesson or within your lesson if you are allowed to bring your own device and use this as a jotter instead of writing it down by hand. There might be a, a page for classwork. And again, this is just, this. in this case, it's a book flits project. And your teacher here has asked you to detail books that you have read. So it might be the case that you've just finished reading Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. And you might want to do a little review on that. You are not limited in just writing into your class notebook. What you can do here is you might want to insert a little picture about Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. It could be one that you've saved, or you can go to From Online, and you can type into the search function, and add a picture. Then you might want to add a little review in after that. You can also link it to various places. You can add in some audio, so a little audio recording of you talking about how much you like the book. It might be a symbol. You might want to do, it has space to do an equation if it's for maths. Or you can add in emojis or various other things. You could draw on the page and use it as a whiteboard. There are lots of different options and things you could do. So it's kind of, as I've said, it's kind of like an online jotter for you to use as you wish. So to return to the page, we just clicked on the general channel here. 
And that covers the basic functionality of what your teacher will be expecting you to use Teams for. As we say, the Assignments tab is going to be explained further in our next video, as well as the Immersive Reader function. And the Grades tab up here, if you're looking at this, will just tell you how well you have done in these assignments and allow you to see your feedback very easily. So it will tell you the status of your assignments, whether you've, you re you've returned them or viewed them, and it will have any feedback down the side of points that you have received. Um, in this case, the teacher hasn't given feedback um, for these assignments. That's what that would look like. But again, for any more information on that, please check out our next video. We hope that this has been useful for you. If you have any other questions, please ask your class teacher and they should be able to clarify this further. We hope you enjoy using Teams as it's a really excellent way for you to do your homework, um, for you to engage with your lessons 